Hello people of the web and YouTube, to the beginner, and today I'm going to be talking about this piezoelectric HID device, aka a knock sensor HID device. And if you guys don't know what that is or what that means, it's essentially a USB rubber ducky that senses vibrations. Now, you can program this to do whatever you want. Originally, I made this to be a little prank device. You know, you give this to a friend, you sneakily plug it in the back of their computer and hide it away somewhere or something. You just wait for them to come home and they smack their desk and all of a sudden stuff on their computer just starts going haywire you know it's essentially a booby trap that I ended up actually finding out to be really really useful like technically I keep this thing plugged in my computer at all times now ever since I made it two weeks ago it's it's just a digi spark and a piezoelectric speaker hooked up and put inside a Darth Vader head but whenever it's on a surface whatever surface it's on becomes one giant button as you guys could probably see from some of the video I have on screen right now whenever I knock on my desk or hit it really hard it will trick or tri or trigger a hid command that I have programmed on the device. Now the one command I like to use normally is the knock command to minimize my windows. Essentially I knock it minimizes my windows and I could do whatever else and whenever I'm done I knock again it opens my windows back up. It's a really cool function and I could definitely see somebody who's maybe impaired really enjoying this. Like they could tie it or hook it onto their door or a wall and they could just kick the wall to do a command in a game or something. It's really cool and I'm surprised how there isn't like a commercial product available that does this kind of a thing you know without coding but yeah with that said speaking of coding it was fairly hard to code for and this is going to make a loud noise so forgive me because I used a DigiSpark. Now for those of you that don't know, the DigiSpark requires some special kind of commands in order to do analog read and write functions. So I had to play around with it a bit, but in the end I got it working, even though I had to take it apart once because um, pin 5, if you have a knockoff DigiSpark and you didn't know this, if you put a current through pin 5, it resets to DigiSpark, and I had to undo that, so I had to take it off pin 5, put it to pin 2, and ever since I did that, it seemed like it worked pretty good. It reads my analog inputs, and there's even a, a setting in the code, which is a, called a threshold. You can change it to a lower number, which makes, makes it more sensitive. In my case, I like keeping it on 3, since this desk is very, very sturdy it needs all the sensitivity it can get however if you put it on something less sturdy that's say like a wall or a, you know a door for instance it makes a lot of vibrations you can up that number and it will only work on that surface but nothing else which is pretty cool but yeah with that said what are my thoughts and opinions on this and do i think you guys should make one technically i think you should it's fairly simple it's just a one resistor and a piezoelectric speaker and a digi spark in total this could come out for maybe two dollars maybe a dollar or less depending if you already have the parts available in my case i had the piezo sensor already available as well as the resistor so in total i spent just one dollar for a digi spark and made this thing work and speaking of making this thing, I will be doing a build video on it later, and I'll even be making it even smaller than how I have it now. If you guys take a look, it's fairly large and not really too bigger than my hand. I mean, you could put it on a desk and it hides away really nicely because it's black. And with that said, I can actually shrink this down a lot more yet. And the only reason why I didn't shrink this one down is because I kept this plastic frame for the piezo speaker. I wasn't too sure how flat this thing would have to get to the table. And keeping the plastic frame in there kept it kind of centered in inside the head. However, if you remove that frame and just um, hot glue it to the inside of this near the bottom somewhere, I think you can use even smaller objects and hide this thing away in them, and you should be able to get away with it fairly good. But yeah, like I said, I will be doing a build video on this later, because for sure I'm going to be definitely making another one of these things in the near future. It's just really fun and really cool. However, if you guys don't want to wait for that video, like always, you guys probably seen the schematic up on screen already. I will be offering that down below in the description too, as well as a parts list. That way you guys can go and buy the parts and make this thing early if you want, before I make another one. However, if you guys want to wait, I will be doing a DIY build video for this thing. Then you guys can follow me along with programming it, as well as setting it up. But yeah, guys, like I said, that's pretty much it for today's video. Um, I'm sorry if it came off a little bit rushed or unprofessional. 
It's just, I wanted to make this before things got any more busy, and plus, I, I just really wanted to show this thing off. It turned out being really, really cool and really fun to mess with, and I just didn't expect it to be something I'd grow to love over this past week and a half, but who knew, it actually did. But yeah, with that said, I'm gonna leave today's video off here now, DTPK signing off, peace. Just insert it into your DS and okay, jokes aside, we're gonna need to do more than that. Anyway, you basically want, you want to wire up a wire right to your Arduino to the analog input on...